been thinking, and that usually gets me in trouble. But hey, what the heck, we all got to think once in a while. And I've been thinking, have you ever been around someone, and maybe this someone is yourself, where it doesn't matter where they are, they're unhappy. They will find something in that situation that they can grab hold of and discount any positivity that might actually be there. I know I've been in that place myself where there's been almost this relentless drive within me to try to find the bad in a situation and it doesn't help in any way. It doesn't change the situation. It doesn't change the people. It doesn't change me. Oh, wait a minute, it does change me. It really changes me because I get into a very bad habit and that habit will soon become a rut in the road that will affect my relationships with others, with myself, and most importantly, with God. I wrote this earlier today. If you're not my Facebook friend, feel free to send me a friend request. I usually post these kinds of things on Facebook every couple of days. So uh, if you're looking for me, the link is in the description below. So this is what I wrote. If every church social setting or committee you interact with in your area seems negative, off-putting, snobbish, or off-kilter. Perhaps the lens of your heart needs to be washed clean. Has a negative, cynical attitude crept into your heart, souring your view of the world around you? Ask yourself, do I have some unfinished business with my past? Forgive those who need forgiving and determine not to plaster labels on people or groups who remind you at first glance of those with whom you've had bad experiences. If you are determined to find the bad, you'll find the bad. If you are determined to dig up the dirt, you'll find the dirt, but you'll miss the gold. Stop comparing the people in your life now with the people from your past, especially if you have fond memories of the people in your past and those people are no longer part of where you are now. Perhaps you've moved, perhaps they moved, perhaps you felt led to go to a new church, whatever. By comparing the new with the old, you will constantly be in conflict. Stop expecting to harvest the same crop in the new land you're in right now. There's different seasons and there's different things that you plant and there's different things that people bring into your life at those different seasons in your life. There were times where you needed a lot of encouragement and hugs and love and all that wonderful stuff. And that never goes. We all need that stuff. There could be times in your life where people have come behind you and given you a push to get you going, to get you out of a place that a nice, soft, comfortable hug would have never gotten you out of. However, this will never change no matter what season you're in. If you plant positivity, openness, and expectations that something good could pop up in your life at any moment, you'll enter into new situations clear of past filters. So I'm going to leave you with this Bible verse, and I'm going to give a little bit of a different twist to it. Everybody who is a Christian has heard this verse, and it's Isaiah 43, verse 18 to 19. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert or streams in the desert in some translations. 
I was given that Bible verse when I first became a believer in Jesus Christ and surrendered my life to him. And it was given to me and it's given to a whole lot of new believers to help them to forget their past and to stop beating themselves up or being tempted to go back to their old ways. But I want to give a little bit of a different slant to it. Sometimes when we are in a new season in our life, it can feel like we're in a desert place where nothing is growing. It's just dry dust and rock and sand. And that's all that we can see. And anything that we do see of anything green is just some sort of weed. We will enter into a new relationship or we'll move to a new town or we'll attend a new church or a new job or whatever and we're constantly comparing where we left. We've got to remember we left where we were to go to the new place because we felt that God was saying it was time to move on or perhaps we wanted to move on because we were no longer really happy where we were. So when we are constantly looking back at our past with a sense of nostalgia and we're always looking back at that, we are not able to see clearly where God has us now. And we're not able to see that God is making a way in the wilderness and he's bringing streams in the desert. And we need to look for the garden that God is planting and that he wants us to tend now. But if we're constantly looking at the past and constantly looking at past relationships, whether they were good or bad, those thoughts are almost like spores that we carry on our cloak. I guess you can put it that way. Can you get the imagery? Think of a wool cloak with a whole bunch of little spores on it. And we're carrying that into our new garden that the Lord wants us to toil and eat of the fruit of that new garden. Well, what happens when we're constantly looking at the past? Those little spores from the robe that we're wearing, our past, comes in and starts to seed the garden that God never intended to turn into weeds. Those spores, no matter they're good or bad, do not belong in our new garden. We can say goodbye to our past with thankfulness for the good in it and thankfulness that God got us through the bad in it, but we need to leave the cloak behind the gate and enter in with fresh seed and till the garden God has given us now, and we will see a bountiful harvest.